Number 9. Mauritania Shipwrecks In the small African country of Mauritania, the Nawadibu Bay is littered with decaying hulks in all directions. Ships that were cheaper to disassemble than to illegally dump in a port. Nawadibu is the second biggest town in Mauritania, but is rather impoverished thanks to a lack of employment prospects. As is often the case, economic hardship leads to corruption in local government and businesses. Large boats are expensive to dismantle, and ship owners discovered that, for a small price, they could just ditch their unwanted boats in Nawadibu's harbor. Ships were transported from all over the world to be abandoned in the shallow seas during the 1980s. There are about 300 rusting ships that have been left throughout the years, including a variety of boats like fishing trawlers, cargo ships, and navy cruisers. Poisonous oils, paints, and rust pour into the bay's waters and have raised environmental concerns, but the abandoned ships have given a few unexpected advantages. In addition to the salvage business that has cropped up near the wrecks, the disintegrating hulks have actually offered new homes for fish and sea life, providing a much-needed boost to the city's fishing economy. Number 8. The Tainmouth Electron The Tainmouth Electron was a 41-foot trimaran sailing vessel designed for the British businessman Donald Crowhurst to use in the Sunday Times Golden Globe single-handed sailboat race around the world. It set sail from England on October 31, 1968 and was found 252 days later in Jamaica without its captain. Records revealed that Crowhurst faced issues from the start, had been giving incorrect locations and had stopped in Brazil to get his boat fixed after it broke down. After the repairs were finished, Crowhurst was on course to finish the race in first place, but all of his rivals were performing just as badly. Crowhurst wrote a 25,000-word manifesto on life before likely committing suicide by leaving his ship, knowing that if he won, race organizers would review his route and discover his lies and how he was in a deteriorating mental state. Number 7. The Unknown Sailor the largest maritime mystery in Australia's history has been solved 80 years after the HMAS Sydney disaster. In November last year, the Royal Australian Navy reported that DNA testing revealed the identity of the unknown sailor, a body found in the cruiser after it sank with all of its crew on board during World War II. 21-year-old Thomas Wellesby Clark was assigned to HMAS Sydney four months before it was wrecked on November 19, 1941. The warship's 645 crew members were all killed. Three months later, Thomas's body washed up in a life raft on the coast of Christmas Island. For decades after, he was called the Unknown Sailor. Clark studied accounting in Brisbane before joining the Army and getting assigned to HMAS Sydney. Although he was originally buried on Christmas Island, his remains were later excavated in 2006. He was then placed at the Geraldton War Cemetery in Western Australia. The sinking of the Sydney resulted in the Royal Australian Navy's worst loss of life the largest Allied vessel lost with its crew during World War II, and a massive blow to Australia's pride. The cruiser's disappearance has sparked discussion for decades, with many historians believing she was ambushed by a German warship. According to the official Australian government's investigation, both ships were traveling at 14 knots when the Cora Moran, a German cruiser disguised as a Dutch cargo, decamouflaged and showed her battle flag before opening fire. The wreckage of both ships was found 112 nautical miles off the coast of Steep Point, Western Australia, in March 2008. Number 6. USS Conestoga In 2016, the USS Conestoga was found in the Greater Farallones National Marine Sanctuary off the coast of San Francisco, 95 years after the Navy fleet tug went missing with 56 officers and crew on board. The discovery solved one of the most confusing nautical mysteries in U.S. naval history. Conestoga left the Golden Gate on March 25, 1921, on its way to Tutuila, American Samoa, through Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. When Conestoga failed to show up in Hawaii on time, the Navy launched a large search near the Hawaiian Islands, the tug's destination. On May 17, over two months later, a commerce vessel found a dilapidated lifeboat with the letter C on its bow off the coast of Mexico, sparking another search. The ship's strange disappearance captivated headlines across the country for months. The Navy finally declared Conestoga and its crew lost on June 30, 1921, when they couldn't find the ship or the wreckage. This was the last moment a U.S. Navy ship went missing without a trace while the nation was not at war. The NOAA Office of Coast Survey found a possible unexplored shipwreck in the Farallon Islands off the coast of San Francisco in 2009. NOAA then initiated a two-year inquiry in September 2014, directed by James Delgado and Robert Schwemme. During a trip in October 2015, NOAA verified the identity and location of Conestoga. Winds blew at nearly 70 miles per hour around the time the Conestoga set sail for Farallon Island. That's according to the weather logs. 
The tug was battling a storm and the barge she was pulling had been blown adrift by strong seas. This according to a jumbled radio communication later received by another ship. The disaster, according to Noah, sank while the crew tried to reach a sheltered harbor on the island. During the dives, no human remains were found. But Conestoga is protected under the National Marine Sanctuaries Act and the Sunken Military Craft Act of 2004, which forbids unlawful disruption of sunken military boats or aircraft owned by the United States government, as well as foreign military craft in U.S. waters. Number 5. MV Joyita the MV Joyita was a 70-foot luxury yacht built in Los Angeles, California and launched in 1931. It was mostly made of wood with a cedar planking hull. She also had a cork liner which offered extra buoyancy. Because of the materials used, the ship was much lighter than the sea, so practically nothing could make her sink. On October 3, 1955, the MV Joyita set sail from Apia, Samoa on the 270-mile trek to the Tokelo Islands. Because of a last-minute technical issue, only one of her two engines was operational. But the voyage was still deemed safe due to the short distance and nice weather conditions. Joita was transporting medical supplies and wood building components. 25 people were on board, including 16 crew members and 9 passengers, and the voyage was supposed to take 48 hours. But three days later, the ship was declared missing, with no distress calls received. For over a week, Air Force flying boats from New Zealand searched the region Joita was thought to be in, covering large expanses of open ocean. But they couldn't find anything. Five weeks later, Gerald Douglas, captain of the commercial ship Tuvalu, discovered Joita more than 600 miles west of her intended path, drifting north of Vanualevu. The ship was half-flooded, significantly tilted, and no passengers or crew were found. Four tons of cargo was also missing. The radio was recovered and set to 2,182 kilohertz, the International Maritime Radio Telephone Distress Channel, according to the rescue team. Theories as to what happened included mutiny, pirate attack, and a frantic escape from the ship, which flooded on its lower decks without sinking. These have all been listed as reasons for the Joita's abandonment, while some new accounts allege Japanese involvement, but none have been verified to this day, and no trace of its passengers has ever been found. Number 4. The Endurance Scientists discovered and recorded one of the largest unknown shipwrecks in history 107 years after it sank. The Endurance, the long-lost ship of the Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton, was found at the bottom of the Weddell Sea in March of this year. In 1915, the ship was wrecked by sea ice, causing it to sink and forcing Shackleton and his men to make an incredible escape on foot and in small boats. Even after resting below 10,000 feet of water for nearly a century, the ship still looks the same as the day it went down in November 1915. The timbers are intact and the name Endurance is clearly visible on its stern. The seasoned polar geographer Dr. John Shears, who led the operation, described the moment cameras landed on the ship as jaw-dropping. He added, the discovery of the wreck is an incredible achievement. The submarines had explored a designated area for nearly two weeks, probing some fascinating targets until eventually finding the wreck site, coincidentally on the 100th anniversary of Shackleton's funeral. The days after the discovery have been spent photographing the timbers and surrounding debris. The ship looks very similar to photos taken by Frank Hurley in 1915. The masts have fallen and the rope has gotten tangled, but the hull is mostly intact. Some damage can be seen at the bow, which is most likely where the ship collided with the ocean's floor. Under the Antarctic Treaty, the wreck itself is designated as a monument and must not be harmed in any way by divers or explorers. As a result, no artifacts from the wreckage have been brought to the surface. Number 3. L.R. Doty the wooden steamer L.R. Doty sank in Lake Michigan during a strong storm back in 1898, killing all 17 people that were on board. The ship was never seen again until recently in June 2010. The wreckage was found by a crew of Wisconsin divers on the beaches of the lake. The search was carried out based on a 20-year-old tip from a commercial fisherman. The Doty was discovered in 1991 by a commercial fisherman that was catching chubs when he hooked a big object on the lake's bottom. He told a few others about it, but not much fuss was made since it was under 300 feet of water and, according to him, may as well have been on the moon. Around that time, he started collecting tales of Great Lake shipwrecks from a database of all master vessels lost on the lakes. He became interested in the L.R. Doty. Then he and his crew chose a day with decent weather and sent divers out to find the ship. All of the items the crew had on them in 1898 are still in the staterooms of the ship in the same condition they were left in. Unfortunately, there are also 17 human bodies still on board. None of the human remains were found when she sank in 1898, and it's believed that the majority of the crew hunkered down in the ship thanks to the 30-foot seas in such a small vessel. 
Because the waves were breaking straight over her deck, it's believed none of the crew were able to reach the surface. The wreck is owned by the people of Wisconsin and is both an archaeological and gravesite. Divers are welcome to stop by to take pictures, but a salvage permit from the State Historical Society is required to remove anything. They've had little success removing artifacts because it's too expensive to maintain them, and there's very little interest in the pieces once they reach the surface. Number 2. SS Clifton The SS Clifton steamer left Surgeon Bay, Wisconsin on September 21, 1924 to take a load of stone to Detroit. The ship was last seen by a tugboat on Upper Lake Huron that evening after passing through the Straits of Mackinac around 10.20 a.m. A sudden wind sprang up and swept across the lake. The resulting storm was fierce and unforgiving. When the SS Clifton failed to reach Detroit on time three days later, a search of the Lake Huron coast from Oscada to Port Huron showed no evidence of the vessel. Wreckage from the SS Clifton eventually washed up on the Canadian side of Lake Huron, indicating the ship sank. The fact that no remains drifted ashore made investigators believe the SS Clifton sank quickly, leaving the men with little opportunity to deploy lifeboats. Her sinking was never fully explained and her final resting location at the bottom of Lake Huron remained a mystery for over a century. That is until September 2016 when David Trotter, owner of Undersea Research Associates, found the wreck just 100 miles south of the site where shipwreck hunters believed she met her demise. They found the Clifton on its side with considerable damage to its bow. Trotter didn't make the discovery public until September 2017 when he and his colleagues had thoroughly researched the location and documented their findings. Number 1. Mary Celeste Captain Benjamin Briggs and the crew of the Mary Celeste, a commercial ship carrying alcohol, left New York Harbor on November 7, 1872 for Genoa, Italy. He chose seven hand-picked team members as well as his daughter and wife. Sadly, they'd never make it to their destination. For two weeks after leaving New York, the Mary Celeste faced dangerous seas and raging storms. The captain made the final entry in the log on November 25th. Nothing was wrong at the time. But when the De Gratia, a British brig, discovered Mary on December 5th, there was no one in sight. When De Gratia's captain boarded the ghost ship, he found three and a half feet of water in the bilge, the ship's lowest spot below the waterline. The shipment was whole, but several barrels were empty. Some believe the crew drank the booze and mutinied, but there was no evidence of violence. Others speculate the ship had been attacked by pirates, but no valuables were taken. In Arthur Conan Doyle's short fiction about the subject, an ex-slave captured the ship, but where did he and the crew go? Water spouts and sea monsters were also considered. Despite these beliefs, no evidence ever matched any of the claims. The most likely explanation was that the fumes from the alcohol had blown the hatch cover off. Fearing for their lives, the crew probably abandoned ship. This would have been a perfectly fine explanation, but the hatch cover was securely fixed. Finally, in 2002, a documentary filmmaker named Anne McGregor looked into it. She rebuilt the ghost ship's drift and concluded the captain had a malfunctioning chronometer and was hopelessly off track. The Mary Celeste was 120 miles west of her intended location. McGregor discovered the ship had just been refurbished and that the coal dust and debris from the refitting had likely clogged the pumps that drained the water taken on by the ship. With the vessel off course but still near some kind of land, Santa Maria, the crew may have cut their losses and simply tried to save themselves by abandoning the ship and heading for land with the pumps not working and no way to pump water out. After 130 years, the crew's mysterious disappearance and the puzzle of the Mary Celeste may have been solved. Thanks for watching. Which of these mysteries did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.